Hi there. Welcome to our second lesson in our series on chemical bonding. In our previous lesson, we used different models to represent the chemical bonds that hold different substances together. We showed that the overall electrostatic forces that exist between metal atoms hold these atoms together in a metallic lattice. Electrostatic forces between ions also hold ions together in ionic solids such as sodium chloride. We also used energy level diagrams to show how a covalent bond is formed between atoms of hydrogen. In this bond, electrons are shared to fill the first energy level. But are there electrostatic forces present in the formation of this type of bond? Well, in this lesson, we will use more models to examine how covalent bonds form. These models will help us have a more detailed look at how the charged particles are arranged and to see if this arrangement gives rise to any electrostatic forces. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use models to explain how a covalent bond forms and to identify different types of covalent bonds. Let's examine the covalent bonds formed between diatomic molecules. The simplest of these molecules is the hydrogen molecule. If you draw a Lewis diagram, you will notice that each of the hydrogen atoms has a single electron. They each require one electron to have a filled first energy level. If hydrogen bonded ionically, one hydrogen atom would lose an electron to become positively charged and the other hydrogen atom would gain one electron to become negatively charged. The electrostatic forces between these charged regions would then hold the hydrogen atoms together. Using this model, you would predict that the hydrogen molecule would have one end positively charged and the other end negatively charged. A molecule of this sort is called a dipole or polar molecule, but there is no evidence for this. The electrons in the hydrogen molecule are shared equally between the atoms. To represent the bond, we draw the shared pair of electrons between the hydrogen atoms. The shared pair of electrons is held in position by electrostatic forces of attraction between the two positive nuclei and the shared pair of electrons. These forces are equal in magnitude but act in opposite directions. So overall, the molecule is electrostatically neutral. A neutral molecule like this is called a non-polar molecule. Now let's look at the energy level diagram of hydrogen again. Remember, these diagrams actually represent two spherical S orbitals. These diagrams represent the area where the electron is likely to spend most of its time. The diagrams we see here are derived from the solution of very complex quantum mechanical wave equations. These equations are actually a complex model scientists use to try and understand the microscopic atomic world. When two hydrogen atoms come close to each other, the electron clouds may repel each other because like charges repel each other. However, if the atoms move towards each other with enough kinetic energy, they can overcome this initial repulsion force. When the distance between the nuclei decreases, the nucleus of one atom will be attracted to the electrons of the other atom. From research into the quantum mechanical model, Wolfgang Pauling showed that electrons in orbitals can have two types of spin. We show this in the energy level diagram by drawing the arrows representing the electrons in opposite directions. Electrons with opposite spin do not repel each other. So when the two hydrogen S orbitals overlap with electrons of opposite spin, there is no repulsion and the bond between the atoms will be stable and form a new single molecular orbital around the two hydrogen nuclei. If, however, the electrons have the same spin, they will repel each other and the atoms will separate. 
The electrons in a molecular orbital are held in position between the nuclei of the hydrogen atoms. Whenever a covalent bond forms with electrons held between the nuclei of the atoms, we call this a sigma bond. In the hydrogen molecule, the sigma bond has formed by two s orbitals overlapping. So this is an SS sigma bond. Notice that there is one pair of electrons in this SS overlap. We call this a bonding pair of electrons. Every bonding pair of electrons forms a single bond. Now let's look at another example of covalent bonding. This time we will look at the bonding that takes place between atoms of fluorine to form a diatomic F2 molecule. Can you draw the Lewis diagram of this molecule? Compare your answer to mine. Can you see that each fluorine atom has seven valence electrons? They share a pair of electrons to form a single bond. The Lewis model does not show us the complete picture. We need to look at the energy level diagram to find out which orbitals are involved in the overlap. Look. The energy level diagram of a fluorine atom shows that there is one unpaired electron in this p orbital. For fluorine to get a filled outer energy level, two half-filled p orbitals have to overlap to share a bonding pair of electrons. This energy level diagram shows that there is a p-p orbital overlap in the molecule but this does not show the shape of the orbitals in three dimensions. Here we can see that two p orbitals of each atom have each got two electrons. These filled p orbitals cannot bond. Only the half filled orbitals can overlap. They will form a p p head on sigma bond. The p orbitals of each of the atoms combine to form a new molecular orbital between the nuclei of the two atoms. Notice the electrons are trapped between the nuclei of the fluorine atoms. The bonds formed in all diatomic molecules is of the same sort. Pairs of electrons are shared equally. So we call the bonds formed in these molecules nonpolar covalent bonds. But not all diatomic molecules form identical types of bonds. In the hydrogen molecule, we have an SS single sigma bond. But in fluorine, there is a PP single sigma bond. Can you work out which other diatomic molecules have the same sort of bond as fluorine? Well, in chlorine, bromine, and iodine, the valence electrons are all in p orbitals. In each of these molecules, the atoms each share a single pair of electrons to form a p-p single sigma bond like that of fluorine. But in an oxygen molecule and a nitrogen molecule, more than one pair of electrons is shared between the atoms. Let's have a look at the covalent bonds formed in the molecules. Look at the Lewis diagram of oxygen here. In each oxygen molecule, there are six valence electrons present. They share two pairs of electrons to have a filled outer energy level. Because two pairs of electrons are shared, we say that this is a double covalent bond. The Lewis diagram of the nitrogen shows that the nitrogen molecule has three bonding pairs of electrons. This is a triple covalent bond. Again, although the Lewis diagrams of these two diatomic molecules give us some useful information, they do not show us how the orbitals overlap or tell us anything about the shape of the molecule formed. For this, we need to look at the energy level diagrams and the atomic orbitals of each atom. In this energy level diagram of an oxygen atom, you can see that the unpaired electrons are found in two different p orbitals. These can overlap to form a filled energy level. To get the idea of the shape, 
Let's look at the atomic orbitals. Notice the first two p orbitals can overlap head on to form a sigma bond. However, the two vertical p orbitals, which also have one electron each, cannot overlap head on. They overlap sideways on. One overlap is above the sigma bond and the other overlapping region is below the sigma bond. Even though there are two regions of overlap, there is only one bond formed here. We say that the electrons in this bond are not tightly held or localized as in the sigma bond. These electrons are said to be delocalized. We call a bond formed when two p orbitals overlap sideways on a pi bond. So, in the oxygen molecule, we have two covalent bonds. The first, a pp sigma bond, and the second, a pp pi bond. Pi bonds cannot form on their own. They always form after sigma bonds as the second or third bonds. Can you use this information to work out what bonding is taking place in a nitrogen molecule? Well, from the energy level diagrams, you can see that all three p orbitals must overlap to form a triple bond. The first bonding pair forms a sigma bond when the p orbitals overlap head on. Notice the electrons of the sigma bond are tightly held in the region between the nuclei of the two atoms. The second and third bonds are pi bonds formed when the p orbitals overlap sideways on. These electrons are not trapped between the two nuclei but in two delocalized regions, one above the line drawn between the nuclei and one below. The formation of the second and third bonds draws the atoms closer together. We can say that the distance between the nuclei called the bond length decreases as the number of bonds increases. We will investigate this relationship in more detail later in the series. Now that we have developed models to describe different types of covalent bonds formed in diatomic molecules, let's see if we can use this to see how covalent bonds form between atoms of different elements. Hydrogen is an element which often reacts with other non-metal atoms to form covalent bonds. Hydrogen has a very small atomic radius, but the non-metal atoms all have a very large atomic radius. This difference in the size of the atoms has a very interesting consequence. Let's have a look at the hydrogen chloride molecule. The Lewis diagram clearly shows that hydrogen and chlorine share one pair of electrons. Can you use the energy level diagram of hydrogen and chlorine to determine the type of overlap taking place in this molecule? Look! The hydrogen and chlorine atoms both require one electron to complete their outer energy levels. Notice hydrogen has a half-filled s orbital and chlorine has a half-filled p orbital. These orbitals overlap to form an sp orbital overlap. However, because the hydrogen and chlorine atoms are different in size, the new molecular orbital formed is not symmetrical. The electrons are not evenly shared, but spend more time closer to the chlorine atom than to the hydrogen atom. The chlorine end becomes slightly negatively charged, represented by a delta negative, and the hydrogen end becomes slightly positively charged, represented by a delta plus. Remember, an object with two ends that are 
opposite in nature is called a dipole. So the hydrogen chloride molecule can be called a dipole or a polar molecule. The bond formed between hydrogen and chlorine is therefore called a polar covalent sp sigma bond. Now that we have looked at different types of covalent bonds, I hope you can see that even for these molecules, it is the net electrostatic forces that act as the glue that holds the atoms together, and that gives rise to the particular physical properties of the substances. Now for your task. Use Lewis diagrams and energy level diagrams to describe the type of covalent bonding formed in a water molecule and a molecule of carbon dioxide. In our next lesson, we will examine the work done by a very famous scientist, Linus Pauling, and use his scale of electronegativity to get a better picture of the chemical bonds formed between atoms. This will help us confirm that the diatomic molecules are all nonpolar and that the hydrogen chloride molecule is polar. Until then. Yeah.